Welcome, this is Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia, speaking on the subject, Why Good Christians Have Evil Binges? And we'll turn to the scriptures. We're up to Romans chapter 7, verse 9, where Paul says, and we're doing the parallel Bible from Bible Hub with all the different versions, so there's no partiality um, displayed in this study. We'll start with, for instance, the contemporary English Bible was, says, Paul speaking, Before I knew about the law, I was alive. But as soon as I heard the, that command, sin came to life. What that means is, before he engaged the law mentally, his moral compass was not under assault by sin. Whilst he was aware of sin and knew that it was bad and caused, caused him to do bad things, when he came in under the law, he found himself under a new kind of assault from sin, from his sinful nature within him. An assault that caused him to have, as it were, no um, consciousness deep enough to navigate away from the sin and deceit and the lusts and everything that come from the sinful nature that were beginning to assault his mind. And he said, but as soon as I heard that command, sin came to life. So this is the thing. When we think there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, and it sounds very, very simple and very... Um, very narrow-minded, but it's massive. Sin comes to life. It says here that in the Good News translation, sin springs to life. Sin sprang to life. Sin sprang to life. Sin became alive. You're giving action to sin to be able to begin to deceive you from the inside and make you do evil. Another version says, um, sin revived, sin lived, and I died. In other words, the the mind of sin began to have more influence over Paul than his own mind. That sounds absolutely profound, doesn't it? But this is what happens. The law can be defined as simply as possible as I can make it as anything we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And when we engage this law to try and make God happy or stop him from being sad, or other mindsets that we think we need to have to make God happy or stop him from being sad outside the finished work of Christ, we bring our sinful nature to life. Now, if I just look quickly at some cross-references here, we might be able to find something. No, we won't. So we'll go to the next verse. Because I was thinking about the verse in Ephesians where it says, the lusts of deceit, in Ephesians chapter 4. The lusts of deceit. Sin wants to deceive us by its lusts. Now Paul says in verse 10, from the Aramaic Bible in plain English, and I found the commandment of life to be for death. In other words, while he was trying to use the commandment to help him to avoid sin and not practice sin, it actually had the opposite result. Now, how many people do you go up to and say, how are you going with the Lord? And they say, I'm going all right, I keep the commandments, or I'm trying to keep the commandments. What they don't realize is they're dealing with a very dangerous force, religious force. It's the force behind religious evil. And God designed it that way. We cannot make ourselves righteous before God or right before God by trying to keep the Mosaic law because it's impossible to keep. All it can actually do, that which was intended to bring me life, actually brought me death. It undoes our ability to bend away from evil. Now, it, sound, it sounds extreme, doesn't it? It sounds like who... Would, how could somebody come up with this? Well, look, it's in black and white. Here's another one. Um, verse 11. 
send use this command to trick me. And because of it, I died. In other words, he lost his connection with his moral compass. He was completely now under the influence of a nature inside him that was causing him to do evil. It was tricking him. It was tricking him to meet its lusts. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. Again, he lost his contact with the inner person that he needed to overcome this old man, it's called inside us, the Adamic nature. It says, it deceived me and by it slew me. The commandment beguiled me. Through the commandment, sin beguiled me and through it slew me. It seduced me. Sin beguiled me, deceived me. These are the sort of things that happen when we think there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. How many Christian people you would never in a million years think would do something evil for some strange reason fall into a trap, fall into sin. They try and hide it. They Many Christians are addicted to sin because they're so bored and tired of trying to make God happy and stop him from being sad. The only thing that's going to bring some any excitement to these people is messing around with sin. Sounds extreme, doesn't it? But the Bible's warning us. So then, the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. Nothing wrong with the law. But it was given so that we can understand that there's a sinful nature inside us that wants to cause us harm. Let's try Derby Bible translation. Did then that which is good become deaf to me? Far be the thought. But sin, see, many of you listeners might not think that you have a sinful nature. You might think that, oh no, I could never sin. It's not, it's not in me. Well, it is. But sin, that it might appear sin, working deaf to me by that which is good. See, the law is good, but our sinful nature needs it to empower itself in order that sin, by the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. How does sin, what does sin need to become exceedingly sinful? What does it need? It needs us to think that there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. We know then that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. Paul said, can you say that? I do not understand what I do. Now this is where it all comes to light, doesn't it? He says, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, that I do, for I don't understand what I'm doing, for I do not do what I want, instead I do what I hate. This is, the, <laughs> this is where you end up. This is how sin is empowered. This is where religious evil comes from. For that which I committed, I did not understand. The evil I committed I did not understand, neither was it anything that I chose. But I was doing what I hated. Why? Because sin had deceived him into doing the things that he didn't want to do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. Since what I do is what I don't want to do, this shows that the that I agree that the law is right. So what we're trying to say is this. We have a sinful nature inside us and it needs the law to empower itself, to get dominion over us, to deceive us into thinking that we're on the right track when really we're undermining ourselves to the point where we'll begin to do things that we don't want to do. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia.
Bye for now.